everyone, and welcome to Get Started Fast with Avid Sibelius 7.5, presented by Avid Blogs. My name is Philip Rothman, and in this five-part tutorial series designed mostly for new users, we'll go through the basics of Sibelius 7.5 so you can get started fast and make music with it as quickly as possible. For this lesson, we'll cover some layout tips and techniques. We'll go over instrument changes, how to transpose music, and how to work with transposing scores. We'll also demonstrate Sibelius' playback features, including video. Here I have our Tchaikovsky score from our last lesson. It has all of its markings in, but the layout needs some work. Let's go to the Layout tab in the ribbon. Here you'll notice many powerful options for customizing your score's layout. I can reduce the staff size and instantly see how it affects my score. I can also adjust the distance between staves or systems for the entire document. There, that's looking better already. If you want to force a system break, just select the bar line where you wish the break to occur and select System Break from the ribbon. The keyboard shortcut for this is Return, which is easy to remember because it's similar to a carriage return that forces a line break in a word processor or on a typewriter if you happen to remember what those are. If I wish to always keep a selection of bars together on the same system, I'll select them and choose Keep Bars Together. A similar feature is Make Into System, which not only keeps those bars together, but keeps other bars out of the system and adds a system break. As we perform these tasks, you'll start noticing these blue layout marks. If you don't see them, go to View, Invisibles, and be sure that Layout Marks is checked. The layout marks aren't just for display. They can be selected and deleted, which may have consequences for your layout. Once you're happy with your layout, you may wish to lock it to prevent Sibelius from making further unintended changes to it. To do that, select the music you wish to lock, go to the Layout tab if it already isn't selected, and choose Lock Format. Even if you add music or change the staff size of your score, Sibelius will stubbornly grant your wish and keep the layout locked. Of course, if you change your mind, you can always unlock the format for any selection of music. You may notice places in your score where objects are not positioned correctly and any collisions are marked red. This is because of Sibelius's magnetic layout feature, which is attempting to correct several things but is limited by the current layout settings in the document. If we switch magnetic layout off for the document, we have numerous collisions, which is equally undesirable. Let's switch magnetic layout back on then and see what's going on. With magnetic layout, Sibelius not only automatically adjusts the length of hairpins to make room for text, but it also attempts to resolve collisions and align certain items vertically and horizontally. In most cases it works beautifully, but sometimes further adjustment is needed. To sort this out, Let's adjust the staff spacing on this system only. Simply click anywhere within a staff where there isn't already music and just drag it up or down. Sibelius will make relative adjustments to the rest of the staves on that system as you drag. Just by dragging these staves, you can easily get all these markings to pop into place. You can even have Sibelius automatically do this for you by selecting the systems you wish to adjust and choosing Optimize from the Staff Spacing section of the Layout tab. In Lesson 2, we reviewed how to add instruments to your score. You can also change an instrument in your score to another instrument for a part or for all of the piece. Let's say we wish to arrange the string orchestra piece for wind quintet. First, I'll triple click the Violin 1 staff to tell Sibelius what instrument I would like to change. Triple clicking selects the instrument for the entire piece. Then I'll go to the Home tab and choose Change in the Instruments dialog. I get a very similar dialog to the Add or Remove Instruments dialog. I can either select my category and family of instruments and browse, or 
I can type the first few letters of the instrument name to search for it. Let's do the same staff by staff for the rest of the piece. You'll notice many notes colored either deep red to signify that they are at the extreme range of the instrument, or bright red to signify unplayable notes. I could try to correct this by transposing certain passages. To transpose a passage up or down an octave, just select it and type Command on Mac or Control on PC and the up or down arrow keys. For other intervallic transpositions, we'll want to go to Note Input, Transpose, or use the shortcut Shift-T. You can choose the type of interval and how large it is. If your transposition goes far afield, you can optionally have Sibelius respell double sharps or flats. To do this, uncheck this box. However, don't use the transpose feature to, say, transpose a transposing instrument like clarinet and B-flat up a whole step. Sibelius will automatically take care of that for you, as we'll see in just a moment. If you wish to transpose the music and change the key signature of your piece at the same time, you'll need to make your selection into a system passage. To do this, simply click System Passage in the Select group of the Home tab. I'll select the rest of the piece, and then type Shift-T for Transpose. Certain other options are now available to us. Let's choose Transpose by Key, we'll go up to B-flat, and then we'll tell Sibelius to transpose key signatures and change the key at the start of the selection. Next, we'll switch on Transposing Score. As I mentioned a moment ago, Sibelius automatically transposes any transposing instruments for you. Simply switch off Transposing Score if you prefer a concert score. I'll switch it back on. This arrangement looks pretty good, but let's remove a few of the things that we don't need. I could individually select each of these pizzicato and arco markings and delete them, but since they're all technique text, I can select them all at once. To do this, I'll use Sibelius's filters. We won't be getting into the filters too much in this tutorial series, but they're very powerful and convenient. For now, I'll just select the whole score by typing Command A on Mac or Control A on PC and going to Filters, Technique Text. Now, I can delete all these markings at once. Likewise, I could individually remove the bottom note of all these double stops, but let's make use of the filter again. I'll select the whole score, and then I'll go to Filters, Notes for Deletion, Bottom Note. Sibelius selects only those places where two notes exist, and then only selects the bottom note. From there, I can easily delete these notes all at once. One other thing, the horn doesn't read tenor clef, so let's get rid of it by selecting it and deleting it. We might as well bring down this section an octave in the horn and the bassoon. Just type command down arrow on Mac or control down arrow on PC. One of the bassoon notes is out of range. I'll just select it and bring it back up an octave. Finally, let's re-optimize our layout so that everything is in the right place. Now that we have this great arrangement, let's hear it by going to the Play tab and pressing Play. You can fast forward or rewind as well. I'll hit the stop key to stop. As long as you have nothing selected in your score, you can hit the space bar to start and stop playback as well. Playback will start from wherever the green line happens to be at the moment. You can initiate playback from anywhere in the score you like. Simply click a note and hit P to play from the selection.
You'll notice that if you make a passage selection, Sibelius will solo those instruments during playback. You can even make a non-contiguous selection by command clicking or control clicking on PC the staves. To bring up a console style mixer, type M for mixer. You'll get a basic view which can be expanded several times by clicking on this button. Here you can solo and mute staves, change levels, change panning, and effects. There's also a click track which can be enabled. Close the mixer by typing M again or simply click the close button. There's also a transport panel which duplicates many of the options on the play tab but also provides a few other features including a timecode readout. To show the transport go to view panels transport. Use this slider to quickly move the playback line back and forth. Use the other slider to change the relative speed of your score for playback purposes. Centering the slider means that Sibelius will play the score at the tempos that they are written. You can easily add video to your score to compose to, and Sibelius will keep the video in sync with the music. Click the Video button and choose Add Video. Select the video in your file browser, and then just use the transport to scroll through the video to see its position relative to that of the playback line. Sibelius will start the video at the beginning of the score, but this and many other advanced settings can be controlled in the timecode dialog. You can create and edit hit points and Sibelius will keep them at a fixed time in your music. If the tempo of your score changes, or if you add or delete music, the position of the hit point will update to reflect those changes. This wraps up our fourth lesson. In lesson five, we'll work with Sibelius's dynamic parts feature, which allows you to create parts that update along with your score. We'll show you how to print your music, and we'll cover Sibelius 7.5's new exporting and sharing options. To learn how to create music without bounds and deliver higher quality, inspiring music, visit avidblogs.com/music.